This here is an old Xeon, like I'm talking very old. 12 years ago, this Xeon E3 1240v2 launched. But in 2024, is it any good at 1080p gaming? Well, stick around to find out as I've been running some benchmarks to see how well this CPU gets on in the modern day. This old Xeon is essentially an i7-3770 in business or enterprise clothing. It shares the exact same specs, that's core count and cache, but this one boosts up to 3.8 gigahertz, unlike the 3.9 gigahertz of the locked i7. So essentially, for the most part, it's the same processor. I picked this processor up in a bundle, including a B75 motherboard, which included an NVMe slot for some reason, which is quite rare for B75 motherboards. And it also had a 256 gig NVMe SSD and eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory, which I won't be using today as I have tested with 16 gigabytes of dual rank memory. But on eBay, I paid just 50 pounds shipped to my door for this whole bundle, which in my opinion, isn't that bad of a deal. And naturally this might pique the interest of a few other buyers if they're looking to make a budget gaming machine. But to truly see how good this CPU is in 2024, I've tested it at 1080p paired with my Vega 56. For comparison purposes, I've tested against my i5-12400F in my test bench just to see how much performance you could be losing compared to a modern CPU. The specs for both of these systems will be linked in the description below with Amazon affiliate links. So if you wanna help out the channel, I do get a small kickback from these, but it is at no extra cost to you. Lastly, I've disabled the Spectre and Meltdown mitigations on the Xeon as they do hamper performance on older processors like this, just to give the CPU every fighting chance it can have. So let's see how this budget CPU gets on. Jumping straight into the benchmarks with Cyberpunk 2077 and setting it to my usual low and high textures. And to be fair, both of these systems were playable for the most part. The Xeon managed above 60 FPS on average, but the 1% load did suffer slightly compared to the 12400F. However, I still think it's totally playable, but you are losing performance compared to a modern processor, and that has to be known. Where you will see big performance differences between processors is in competitive games like Fortnite, and the Xeon did lag behind quite a bit in this title, by 69% in fact. But that's not the biggest problem because the 1% lows are looking way worse with the older Xeon getting, well, not even getting 60 FPS for the 1% low, where the 12400F got above 140 FPS there. So your frame times are suffering and your average frame rate is suffering as well. In my testing in the Witcher 3's Novigrad, it does seem to be very CPU intensive and that is because the i5-12400F had a 96% lead with the average frame rate. The Xeon wasn't even capable of cracking 60 FPS on average and the 1% low wasn't brilliant getting 33 FPS. But if you switch up to a newer CPU, you will get much better frame times and a much better average frame rate as the average FPS even went into the triple digits with the 12400F. So that's how much performance you're losing with an older CPU like this. Keeping the trend of losing performance in esports games, Rainbow Six Siege sees a 60% performance increase in favor of the i5-12400F. However, the performance with the Xeon wasn't too bad, getting north of 170 FPS on average, and the 1% low was just over 100 FPS, so the game, if you wanted to play it competitively on a CPU like this, it's doable, and I wouldn't say it's that bad. But the i5-12400F is good enough for 240 hertz experience at full HD where the Xeon isn't. F123 saw the smallest performance difference between the averages on both of these CPUs and even the 1% lows were looking pretty fine as well. The Xeon got 117 FPS on average, but that 1% low stays relatively close to it at just over 90 FPS. And the 12400F, Yes, the performance is slightly better, but it's not by much. So this kind of leads me to believe that F123 just really isn't that CPU demanding at all, depending on which GPU you want to pair with a CPU like this. 
Valve's Counter Strike 2 is a heavily CPU demanding game, and that stays true today with the i5 12400F enjoying a 137% performance increase on average. But if you look at the performance that Xeon's putting out, it's nowhere near as good as the modern i5. So, is it playable? Yes, 93 FPS is playable, but that 1% low isn't looking particularly brilliant. Then again, the 1% low with the i5 isn't looking great either. So this Xeon isn't ideal for Counter-Strike. God of War is pretty optimized and even so on an older processor like this, you're still going to be having a playable experience. 69 FPS on average, nice, with a 1% low of 49 FPS, isn't the worst performance in the world? Yes, it isn't ideal, that 1% low, but I played it just fine, so you'd probably be able to play it just fine as well. The 12400F though is good enough for triple digits with the average frame rate, and the 1% low isn't that far behind. God of War is playable on both of these processors, but you are losing quite a bit of performance doing so. So overall then, I'm pretty underwhelmed by this processor. It feels essentially the same as the i7-2600, which I tested recently. You can watch that video up there, by the way. And this is basically an i7-3770, and Intel did make quite a few performance leaps with Ivy Bridge. So I'm pretty underwhelmed. Every game today was somewhat playable to a lesser or greater extent on the Xeon but where the big performance hits are, are with the 1% lows. And that is something you need to take note of with older CPUs like this. The frame delivery isn't going to be as good as modern processors as it can't keep up with newer GPUs, even ones as new as the Vega 56, which is seven years old now. It's, yeah, it's, it's getting on a bit, so. And that's just with the AAA games. If you look at the eSports games, this is where you're going to be losing a lot more performance, as you are more likely to be CPU bound in those types of titles, purely because of the frame rates you're going to be getting. If we look at Counter-Strike 2, the i5-12400F enjoyed a whopping 137% performance improvement, which is absolutely wild. That is a lot of performance you're losing with the same GPU if you went with this processor. I admit Counter-Strike 2 was a bit of an extreme as the other esports games did perform, I would say, okay on this CPU, but then again, you are still losing a lot of performance and it's down to whether you're okay with that. So for the recommendation, I don't really recommend the CPU in 2020 fuel, fuel, four, 2024, purely because there are better alternatives on the market. In every one of these CPU videos, I feel like I say this, you need to look at Haswell if you're building a very budget machine. That is because for like an extra five pounds or something like that on the used market, you could get a Haswell Xeon, which is far better than this, in my opinion. They also support AVX2, so pretty much every game will at least start on them whereas this does not support AVX2, so you might be out of luck there. On the other hand though, if you find this CPU in a bundle like I did today for around 50 pounds and you've got a motherboard, RAM, and potentially an SSD along with it, I would say that's not that bad of a deal, but make sure you pair it with nothing more powerful than something like an RX 580 eight gigabyte. That's a GPU I took a look at and I deemed it to be one of the best budget GPUs so I think pairing that with this might be a decent pairing. So yeah, I would probably avoid this one purely because they're just better options on the used market, like I said, with Haswell CPUs, or even if you wanted to go a bit newer, you could potentially get something around the Ryzen 3000 on AM4, which is still an excellent platform in my opinion. So yeah, only get this one in a bundle, but if you want to see how two much better CPUs, in my opinion, get on, there are two videos right there. And I'm going to leave this one here. Thanks for watching.